What's going on everybody? Fetter here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to do kind of a, just a short discussion about my experience so far with the Chidi Tech X Plus 3. And yes, I do have it sitting off to the side here while I'm doing a review on another machine. So my apologies for that, but I still wanted to have a discussion about it. I've been running into some problems and I'm sure if you guys have searched uh, around on YouTube or pretty much anywhere where they do reviews on this machine, you've come across at least some negative reviews about it. There's one specific critical one that I've seen that talks about how the bottom is plastic and there are some problems revolving around heating and the plastic moving and things of that nature so the Z offset is hard to master and this is technically totally true um, the other machines that are also released about the time at the same time the X max 3 and the uh, X smart 3 don't have this issue it's just related to the X plus 3 and actually since you guys are watching this right now uh, Chidi Tech has officially said that they've stopped selling the machine until they figure out what the problem is and I, I actually think that that's great. Uh, some companies would know the problem and just continue to sell them. Um, so at least that's commendable for sure. But I want to discuss about the whole thing because there's a lot of positives that are wrapped in this negative, if that makes sense. So I want to talk about it. So first of all, I have been printing with this machine for a month straight, actually a little bit longer than a month. I have 250 plus hours on the machine. I can't count to a certain point because I did a firmware reset early on and I had about 70 hours, I think a little over 70 hours on the machine then. So I don't have a full record in my clipper of the total hours, so it's hard to count. Most of those hours have been ABS. Hey look, the print's done. Most of those hours have been ABS uh, and I have, ha I have printed a few things, for example, this and some other test prints uh, in PLA. I printed a little bit in TPU and I printed about half a spool or so in ASA, which comes out really great, by the way. So I have had some amazing success with the machine. Some of the prints towards the end, uh, as you can see here, are quite literally what I would say flawless. By the way, this is a see-through filament. What you're seeing here is the, uh, the infill, and this is smooth as butter. Uh, maybe I can get the light to shine on it right there. Uh, yeah, I'm very proud of these prints. Some of the best prints that I've gotten just in general, let alone in ABS. So there's that. When the machine is running, it's running fantastic. And here's an entire bin of a full uh, Trident uh, kit. Uh, all the parts for it right here, except for just a few a few things here and there. That, that's beside the point. What I'm trying to say is all of my prints that I have printed with it have been amazing. When I actually posted my video, it should be popping up here, by the way, the video that I did with my initial impressions, the day I posted that video, I started running into the dreaded Z offset issue. And it has something to do with you changing temperatures of your prints. I haven't quite figured out exactly what, but I've definitely spent quite a while, too much time probably, trying to fix the machine. Now, with that said, I haven't been alone. Uh, most people have, some people have had this as well. And Chitty Tech, the reason why I said most is Chitty Tech has been helping mostly every single person that I've talked to. I myself have a 60 email thread with Chitty Tech, with going back and forth with them, actively trying to legitimately help me. They have sent me new probes, I've had three. They've sent me, uh, uh, new hot ends. I have several of those. They sent me a new bed because mine's destroyed doing specifically testing, trying my best to help out. And the reason why I'm continuously helping them, even though they have this issue with this printer, is because they've found the problem, they've owned up to it, and I really respect that. They're actually trying to fix it. I know of only two other brands uh, from my uh, subscribers, from the people in my comments, from the people in my Discord, I know two other brands that are willing to go this far to try to help out uh, their, um, you know, people that are buying their machines. You know, if you have a, I hate to throw names out there, but if you have some Creality machines, if you have Voxlab machines, if you have uh, King Kaiwu machines, um, if you have even some BQ machines, if you have a major issue with those machines and you try to communicate with them, you're going to have some problems. Yes, there are cases of people getting parts, getting replacements, of course, but not to this level, at least in my experience. The reason why I'm saying that is I have several people, both in my Discord uh, and in my Patreon and in some comments, that have had this machine run into problems, and then Chidi Tech has offered a full refund and letting them keep the machine. Obviously, no um, uh, you know, warranty at that point. Um, uh, or doing a half of a refund uh, and the full warranty and keeping the machine. 
So you got to think about that as a brand. These are not cheap machines. They're expensive. They're letting you keep them. Uh, they're letting you work on them and fix them. And they're giving you money back instead of just, you know, trying to offer some uh, small level of help. And most of the people that I have personally talked to that have run into issues have said that Chitty Tech has had amazing support. So that alone is the reason why I want to continue uh, to help them and to help them figure it out because in my personal experience in 3D printing, uh, Prusa and Bamboo Labs have been the only two brands that are really, really stood by behind their machines. Obviously, there's uh, experiences across all boards of people having success, but not as broad as this. So that's why. Now, with that said, for the time being, my machine is having the problem again for the second time, and I just don't have weeks at a time to try to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm stepping back from the X Plus 3, uh, especially because it's not being sold right now. Luckily, uh, people aren't going to be getting these things and running into this problem. I'm going to let Chitty Tech fix this and get back to me with a fix. And if they do, if there's a solution for this, I will gladly do a follow-up video for it. So I just wanted to have this out there in the world, to have this conversation piece out there so that in case you are looking to buy this machine, uh, you're wondering maybe why it's not on the market anymore this is the reason it has some level some problem with the Z offset the bed slightly rises uh, and you have inconsistencies with uh, Z offset uh, one of the things that I did do I kind of want to touch on is I went through uh, their config and redid the whole thing uh, to my own custom configuration and when you're doing configurations for clipper uh, you can set your own Z offset and I thought by setting one by knowing a physical number I'm going to have success and I did for quite some time until I realized that if you do anything on their screen the Z offset that you did uh, initially with the screen itself is saved there and it attaches additionally onto your preset Z offset in the config after all, their marketing around this entire thing has never been to for you to go into the Clipper configurations. They've always mentioned that they run Clipper, but they've never given you full access technically. We have it, we got it, but they never actually marketed it. And that's for good reason. They don't want you going in there and messing with it because they're running their own fork of Clipper. In fact, some of the uh, earlier uh, models, people updated Clipper and it bricked their machine to some extent. Uh, some people went in there and did things like mine and you know double their Z, uh, Z offset and then have their bed completely destroyed which I did um, you know I'm not completely incompetent in the software or in the firmware rather uh, I do know my way around it a little bit uh, but still in their marketing they state that you know they run clipper but they kind of want you to use their ecosystem and I understand why it's because of that now I have been able to change pretty much everything else in their config even install things using an SSH no problem the problem you run in there is the space that you have available to you is somewhat limited but it's still not bad um, so as long as you leave the offset and the mesh untouched and let the screen do it, you're totally okay. And you run into a strange issue with Z offset when in Clipper, you notice that you can save config because you've maybe altered the, um, the Z offset while you're printing, something along those lines. That setting messes with the screen setting. So if you're going to have this machine and you want to tinker with Clipper, stay with Clipper, don't use the screen at all. And then also, if you don't want to mess with Clipper, don't use Clipper and just use the screen. However, in my personal opinion, I'm getting the best uh, possible prints out of it when I went into Clipper and did all of the um, uh, all of the calibrations, e step slash rotations, uh, you know, linear advance, obviously input shaper, you can do that on the screen, but input shaper through uh, Clipper, um, PID tuning. Once I got that, I was really able to dial it in. Some of the earlier prints that I did for this Voron, I'm going to have some problems fitting together because without the linear advance uh, settings and the input shaper perfect, uh, perfectly done, the, they were printing fine. They just aren't going to be absolutely perfect because the shapes of them are just not exactly there. But anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Those are all the things. Uh, they earned my trust with their support uh, and I will gladly do more 
uh, with their machine when they have some kind of fix. I do have the X Smart 3, which I'm really excited about. It is the smaller version of this. It is a desktop machine, which is something I was kind of looking for with these speeds, you know, with this style of Core XY plus Clipper. So I'm really excited for it. Uh, if you guys are too, or you have some questions about the X Plus 3 itself, let me know down in the comments below. Let's have a conversation. Um, and, you know, I'll gladly answer anything about the machine uh, as long as, you know, I've had experience with whatever you guys are asking. Uh, and like I said, I am in talks with Chitty Tech to try to find some solution to see how, you know, where they're willing to go with it. And I'm just glad to hear that they took it off the market. You know, they know that they have a problem and they're reaching out to everybody with all of these warranties and trying to help everyone, you know, getting their printer straight. So with that, they have my kudos. All right, that's all for me for today. And as always, I'll see you down in the comments. Later.